You said repertoire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> repertoire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
and blue never moves. It's always opposite of green and so on. And so that means that blue and white, there's only one piece that actually belongs there. And it's going to be blue on the top and white on the bottom. And there it is. One little move and it's in place. And then I say, and look, now the orange one, whoops. Now the orange one is in place. And now the green one. And this is a truly scrambled cube. It's not some sort of prearranged thing. And then now the white one. Uh, sorry, I missed one. What did I do here? There we go. So I'm trying to look on the camera and do it all at the same time. Anyway, so then I show them, look, now those four pieces are all set. And that's, then you're done. And then I say, now the next goal is we're going to put in the corner pieces. And for example, the corner that's going to go here is going to be white, orange, and blue. And then at the same time, I'm also going to put in this orange and blue piece all at the same time. And so I just quick, I'm going to see if I can do it on camera here. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to look at the cube. I'm just going to look at the, the pieces and just do it. So I, I do some, you know, quick moves and then bam, there's those two corners are in. And then I'll do it again. Like uh, I'll, I'll look around. I'll say, okay, let's say we'll put in, um, you know, the red ones. And then I do some quick stuff. Man, I'm a little rusty here. And now the red ones are in. And then uh, let's do the orange ones. Sorry, I'll try to keep it in frame. It's a little awkward. And now the orange ones are in. And last but not least, let's do the red ones. And the red and green. And so now those are in. And then I tell them, I say, look, when you get to this position, and, and as I'm going along, I tell them, you know, knowing what to do is different than how to do it. I get that. And I understand that I'm telling them that, you know, how do you do these things is, is, you know, it takes a whole different story and takes some practice, but it's not as complicated as you think. I then tell them when you get here, the bottom layer is the only thing left. There are only 57 algorithms that you need to memorize. And then I start to get a little absurd, but that's true. And from, and if you know those 57 algorithms, you'll look at this, recognize which one you need to do. And then you do it and you'll now have solved the bottom color. And then last there from this position, there's only 21 algorithms to memorize and you do it and you have a solved Rubik's cube. So I do it a little bit tongue in cheek, like, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's not as hard as you think. Then if they want, it depends. I let them mix it up again. And, um, then I just do the solve without talking and it takes about 30 seconds. So anyway, I'm not the fastest cuber in the world. They're plenty faster than me. So anyway, after that, I say, you know, that's one thing to be able to solve a cube. But here, and this is Mark Elsden's um, uh, cube predicted, I think it's called. I say it's one thing to be able to solve the cube. But what real expert cubers do, they use these, they're called Rubik's Cube practice cards. And they use these pictures. And the, the idea is you randomly draw a card out cut to a card and then whatever patterns on there, you make that on the cube. It takes a lot of practice. And in the meantime, I've also revealed a little envelope that was rubber banded to the deck here. And uh, I say, you know, but it's, it's, things aren't always what they seem. Um, so we're, I'm going to show them. I want to try this. And I go through and I let them pick out a card. And then let's just say they end up with this one. And I go through and I show the cards before it and after, like you could have thought of any of these, like this is a, totally different pattern you could have thought of. And, and this is a totally different pattern. And I go through and show them that. But then I, I say, I open the envelope and I, where's it? There we go. I open up the envelope and show that before we started, I came, well, that's going to be some weird green screen stuff going on there. I created the same exact pattern in this envelope. And I have some pattern about maybe doing an arts and crafts project with my daughter. I, I sometimes use that pattern. But where it ties in with things aren't always what they seem is just that um, you thought I was going to do it on the cube, but no, I did it on here. So uh, that's my second effect that I do. Then it's time. I say, you know, I showed you a, a number a minute ago, this one. But have you ever seen this number before? And I show, I compare it. And I say, remember, this one 
is the number of seconds that the universe has been alive. I don't even know how to say this number. That number is the number of possible combinations that can be shuffled, uh, that a deck of cards can be shuffled. Which means that theoretically, every time you shuffle a deck of cards, they've never been shuffled that way before. Never. So, I'm going to have you right now shuffle the cards. And this could be, um, just know that you're creating something unique that nobody's ever seen before. So I give them the deck, I have them shuffle the cards. And I say, now we have, whatever their name is, Joe, we now have Joe's deck. This is your shuffle, your deck. And then I go into uh, whatever I'm in the mood for as far as card tricks go. Um, typically, it will be, uh, Triptych will be first, which I already mentioned in the previous um, video, which is my strolling repertoire. It's trip, tri it would be triptych. And then following triptych would be um, um, uh, cutting tens and, uh, and spiral. Same thing. My card set doesn't really change to whether it's close up or not. The only difference is I, I was considering in this show, and again, this is a show in development, so I've never done this full routine. I, I mentioned in the previous video, which um, it's right here if you want to see it, number two, um, that I, I mentioned there that I, if I stack the deck ahead of time for cutting tens and the spiral principle, I've got a really deceptive set of two tricks right there. And so the problem is I have to have this prearranged and I can't let them shuffle it, which completely takes away from this whole line here. And so I hate that. Uh, so I, I've had to kind of sacrifice that. And I really want it in there, but I can't. So I, if I'm going to do those tricks, I have to do them separately, which they're still, it's very deceptive, but it's, the spiral thing is way more deceptive -er if, if you can do it following cutting tens. Anyway, so I do my card set. It's, depending on how I'm feeling, a couple cards. Um, I do have in here, as I mentioned, uh, Boave uh, by Max Maven, but I'm not sure if it's going to, stay in the set and i also have cameron francis's uh nothing but the truth but i like that as an opening card trick which which gets away from this a little bit because i want this to be my opening to the cards um but the my opening line for the the lie detector thing uh, is also i can probably still blend these together i just haven't worked that out like i said this is a thing that's still in the works so everything's coming out of this box here, right? So now, um, and as I'm done, I'm putting things in my pockets, not in the case. So I, I'm going down into the what's in the case. Then I say, now, you know, things aren't always what they seem. You just saw me do some stuff with cards, and you're probably thinking, man, I'd hate to play cards with you. Well, the truth is, I suck at playing cards. I suck at it. I'm just really lucky. That's what it comes down to. And I have my lucky wallet. Oh, and I took out... Crap. I took it out. I, in there, I had the changeling. The reason I took it out is because I just did a review video for Jeff McBride. Um, and I reviewed the changeling on there and for the McBride TV magic. In fact, you know what? Why not? I'll let you guys see that. It's actually a, an unlisted YouTube video right there. It's, it's, you get to see a different side of my reviews. It's where I talk more about effect and not method really at all. So check that out right there. But I would open this up and, uh, and this, I have done this routine many times. I'm glad I didn't try to do it on somebody because it, it's missing, but I would say, I'm just lucky. I just have my lucky wallet and it's with my lucky wallet that I've won millions of dollars and I pull out the changeling bill and it's a $1 bill and I flick it and, and I say, look, millions. And I show a one and they get the laugh Then I flick it and say, no, really millions. And I unfold it. And then when it's folded up, I just tuck it in here. Okay. And then I say, no, oh, this really is my lucky wallet. Look, see, lucky wallet right here. Um, we're going to play a hand of poker, and I'm going to prove to you that it's my lucky wallet. And I pull this out, which is nothing fishy about it. It's just the rank of the hands. And I show it to him, and I say, we're going to use that in case you don't know the rules of poker. But we're going to use these jumbo cards here so that you don't think I'm doing any sleight of hand. So you'll know that it's all luck. And you, sir, you get my wallet. You're the lucky one. You over here, Bob, 
you make all the decisions. And I'm going into John Bannon's 10-card poker deal. I can't remember what it's called, but um, it's, it's Bannon's. And my presentation is very similar to Eugene Berger's. His uses like a voodoo doll where the head comes off and everything. Um, but this 10-card this poker deal from John Bannon, and the other guy literally makes all the decisions. He determines which cards to give to the guy with the wallet and which cards he's going to keep. They play a hand, and always the guy with the wallet wins. And so I, we show the cards, and he wins. And then uh, I say, see, it's my lucky wallet. I knew. I, I, I mean, I, I told you, yeah, my lucky wallet. In fact, I have proof, even though the, you know this is my lucky wallet. But look, holding my lucky wallet guarantees a win. Four of a kind over a full house. And that's there is, it's not a bunch of outs. That's really the only solution. So that's the routine. It's, it's, and the thing about this, it's a nice little thing that all fits in the wallet. By the way, this is the Mullica hip wallet that Paul Harris Presents put out. I don't use it for that. I use it for this routine. And so the lucky wallet, the playing card thing, and then the changeling bills in there. And then um, I also have this, which is, um, I can't really show it to you, but I can tell you the basic effect. And it's it's based on the old, um, how was it, the mental epic, or, or not mental epic, mental choice or whatever, where you have like three playing cards, and no matter which one they pick, there's basically you have three outs. Um, it, you prove that. This is one with five outs, and it's v almost identical to Jay Sankey's effect, which I think is called Sankey's Choice. I've just modified the props a little bit and used this. Um, but I keep that in here, right there. And um, the reason I've got that in there right now is because this is its a fantasy of mine to maybe one day get you know have a situation where they just want me to do like a five or ten minute close-up spot. And so I talk about that this is, you know, how I've made lots of money as a gambler. And, uh, but I'm not, I'm really, it's all about luck. And I've gotten so lucky that I can, I can almost predict the future. And I've won millions of dollars doing this. And I pull out the changeling flick and then I pull this out. There's another million dollar bill in here. And I say, here's another million dollars I've won. And, and I'm, in fact, I'm willing to bet a million dollars that I know the outcome of what we're about to do. And it's five cards are in here and I predict which one they're going to pick. And then I put it away and I put this away in my pocket so that this wallet has nothing else in it. And then I go into that banded poker routine. I'm considering leaving this in um, there, though, even in my in this set show. So that's almost everything. I've got two things left. Um, one, and, and I, I, I kind of I'm a little bit torn about let me see if I can find something here to give you the full effect this yeah okay and this so I've gone back and forth on this idea and this is what I wanted to do I say now and I get kind of serious this is the moment in the show where you get to choose what happens and I would have these spread out on a table and I'd say in this envelope is proof and I place it down in front of them that you do not have free will and in this envelope is proof that I can read your mind. And in this envelope is a dark and macabre story about death and the plague. And I put it down on the table. <laughs> Pick which one you want to do. And I, one of them was going to be uh, Boive, which is the one proof that, I, that you have no free will. One of them, but I have a different presentation for Boive that I do now, so it doesn't quite fit that. Um, this one, I... We've gone back and forth about what would be in this one. One, it was just a set of ESP cards, and I'd do an ESP trick. One time I had in there sound waves. And I, I just couldn't figure it out. And then this is 13 tarot cards. And it is my handling of... Um, oh, crap. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Dang it. I'll have to put the... I'll put it right here. Sorry, guys. But it's, it's Bob Neal's... Uh, trick about um oh that's bugging me oh sorry guys i wish i could remember the name of it anyway it's it's uh it's it's a trick where um in my version anyway um uh, you have a village full of these tarot people and death visits the village 
and they're spread out on the table, and you play a little game where you decide who lives and who dies. And at the end, even though the cards are face down and they were shuffled up, the the death card is somehow the only one that survives. So that's the basic routine. I've got a lot of funny lines and gags. And by the way, I'm writing it up, and it will be available one of these days, someday. So that's that. Um, the other two effects, the reason I, I don't do that three-envelope thing, I love the idea of saying this one is this and this one's that and this is a dark and macabre story of death and the plague um is i i want to do all three of those tricks um or i can never find a third one that i liked and i'm torn between do i really want to give them a choice do i want to do all three and i'm just like i ah, forget it i'll just always do the tarot thing in that, the end last but not least um i've got a coins through handkerchief routine that i'm working on that uh, I mentioned in the previous video, a coin trick that I needed a gimmick for, and I'm waiting for the gimmick to arrive. And so I have no, I don't know if I'm even going to do it, but if so, this cloth is in there just in case. And that is the whole thing. There's nothing else in there except for this. And that's actually my friend Jess Cone, sounds a lot like Jeff Stone, gave me. I have it Velcro to the case, and on the back of it is a two of spades. And I had a thing that I was doing at the beginning of the show where I'd have somebody name any card. Um, and if I got lucky, I would turn that over and show it to them. But if not, I would just go into something else. But I, I haven't decided if that's going to stay in. So that's the whole show. Now, here's the fun part. At the end, I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do this. But at the end, I get the lighter back out. I light it, set it on the table where it's all somewhere in this mess here. There it is. Set it on the table, flame lit here, and then I'm going to get the key out of my pocket and have it, and I'm going to touch it to the flame, and it's going to burst into flames, and, and then it'll vanish. I know how I'm making it vanish. What I don't know is how I'm just, I'm going to use flash paper, but I don't know how I'm going to justify where I'm just going to put a ball of it on the tip or what. I haven't figured that out to where it's not too obvious. Um, I, I just haven't figured out how I'm going to ring that in and make it fit. But then it, it comes full circle. I, I pretend to lock the case and then I you know, light it, the key on fire, and whew, it van vanishes in a ball of flame just like it appeared. So there you go. That is my entire close-up repertoire show, set show. I, I shouldn't say repertoire because I'm not actually doing that show yet. So there you have it, folks. I have not yet decided if I'm going to do a fourth video about my stand-up act. So this may be the end. Either way, click it, thumbs up it, share it, listen to it. Oh, this is a good song. In My Head by Bianca Ryan. She was that little 11-year-old girl that won America's Got Talent um, not a few years back. With, uh, she was amazing. So In My Head, I really like that song. I'll put a link to that in the description below. I got to go because I'm running out of space on my iPhone here. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time. Peace out.